some practice using them. So this is obviously a, an older version of a microscope. You know, some of the first microscopes looked something like this. There's a variety of types. Um, but they all basically work in the same principles. You have a set of lenses uh, that magnify an object so that you can see detail you otherwise wouldn't be able to see. For example, that's the letter E in the newsprint seen through a microscope. Those are some plant cells. This is a modern microscope similar to the ones we're going to be using. So you have some vocabulary there to refer back to. So we are going to be using two types of microscopes this year. But we'll mention a third. Okay. This first one, this is the one we'll use the most. This one up here. Okay. Um, and it's called a compound light microscope. What does compound mean? I don't know. What's a compound word? Two words. Laura? Two words combined. Compound sort of means multiple parts. Um, this is called a compound microscope because actually the image gets magnified in two places. It gets magnified once down here as light goes through the objective lens and once up here as light goes through the eyepiece. Okay, so that's why it's called a compound microscope. Um, compound microscopes can magnify sort of a variety of, uh, depends on what power you're on. In our microscopes that we use, they go from a low power, which magnifies an object 40 times, up to high power in our microscopes, magnify 100 times. But there are microscopes that can magnify more than that, up to you know, 1,000 times or even more. But ours are going to be 40 to 400 x. times. Think about it like they magnify. So when you see something at 40x, what you're seeing is 40 times larger than it actually is. The other type is one of these. This is called a dissecting microscope. Okay. And the dissecting microscope um, can see, what's the main difference that you see? Shane? Yeah, there's two eyepieces. Okay, we'll talk about the benefits of that in a minute. Another difference is in where the light comes from. In this compound microscope, where does the light come from? It comes from the bottom, goes up through the stage, through the object you're looking at, into the lens and up to your eye. In this microscope, light comes from this light above, bounces off the object, and then goes up and you get the lens through your eye. And that's an important difference. And we'll talk about that in a minute. A dissecting microscope, it depends on the, which one you get actually back there. Um, we have a couple different type, types. Um, ours will go from 10x at the lowest. And some of ours will go to 40x, some will go to 30, some will only go to 20. Uh, but there's a break. Obviously, then, the magnification in the dissecting scope is much smaller than in the compound microscope. How high can you get with the dissecting? In other types of microscope, you know, not the ones we have? Yeah. I don't know. Generally, they don't go that high because generally you look at larger object, objects in the dissecting microscope, so you don't need to uh, magnify the image that much. Uh, the third type is one we won't use. I'll show you some images from it. It actually looks more like a, sort of a computer than it does a microscope. Anyone guess what it's called? I'm, you probably have heard about this type of microscope. You may find it at a university or a hospital or something. It's called the electron microscope. And rather than making an image using light, the electron microscope uses electrons, tiny little subatomic particles to make an image. It allows you to get a, a great deal of magnification, up to even greater than one million times. So those are the three main types of microscopes. Do you have any of those here? Electron microscopes? No. Do they cost a lot of money? 
Yeah. All right, so let's just look at a few different images of things seen under these types of microscopes. For the compound microscope, generally you get sort of a two-dimensional view of the object. Okay, this is an amoeba. We'll see those later this year. Paramecium, Euglena, those are all single-celled organisms, protists. Some more, Orticella, Radiolarians, and Foraminiferans. All living organisms seen under the compound microscope. Again, you see kind of just a flat image. When we look at the dissecting microscope, things look a little different. That's an aphid, a small insect. So how does it look different? Know. It looks more realistic. Yeah, because it's shown sort of in a three-dimensional view. Okay. Now, for these objects, in order to see something under the compound microscope, it has to be very, very thin. Okay. That's because light travels through this light source up, has to go through your object. So I can't look at my hand here on the compound microscope because no light is going to go through and I'm not going to see anything. However, if I look at my hand with the dissecting microscope, I can see it because light is bouncing off of my hand through the lenses. It doesn't have to go through my hand. So you can see larger, thicker objects that are not transparent with the dissecting scope. You can't see them with the compound microscope. The dissecting microscope also gives you a three-dimensional view of the object. You know why? What about this allows you to see three-dimensionally versus this? Maya? I have a question. So let's answer my question first. Okay. Um, Do you know an answer to my question? No. Anthony? The light is... It's um, not the light. Okay, Shay? The two eyepieces? Yeah, the two eyepieces. In order to get a, a three-dimensional view of an object, you need two eyes working. Um, animals that see well in three dimensions, think about things that climb around, or like a cat, uh, a monkey, a raccoon, things with good depth perception, they have two forward-facing eyes. Versus a fish, for example, with two eyes on the side, can't see very good depth-wise, but can see a wide range. So do you know how we see in three dimensions? How our eyes work? So if you hold, hold a finger out in front of one of your eyes, pretty close, and open and close your eyes, you've probably done this before, right? What happens when you open and close your alternating eyes? What's it look like your finger does? Is your finger really moving? No. So why does it look like that? Different views. Double vision. Not quite. Why, Donovan? It's a different view. Yeah, because if I hold my finger in front of one eye, this eye is seeing it straight on, but this eye is seeing it at an angle. Now, change the distance. Like, hold it really, really close. Look how much it moves. Hold it far away. Look how much it moves. What's the difference? When does it seem to move much more? When it's close to you. And so what happens is our brain, when it looks at an object close to us, when each eye sees it at a very different spot, it tells our brain, well, this must be very close to you. If you look like across the courtyard at like a pane on a window and do it, it doesn't seem to move at all. When both of our eyes see it basically the same, our brain tells us that must be far away. In fact, this is how 3D, 3D movies and 3D glasses work. Any of those 3D glasses, they make each eye see a different image. Okay? You know, the, the old ones, it's like red and blue. The newer ones, they're polarized so that you only see part of the movie that's being projected. Um, the ones you might have if you have a TV, they actually have a little shutter in there that blinks back and forth, uh, synchronized with the TV, so each eye sees a different image, giving you a sense of depth. All right. If you ever, if you wear contacts, you ever lose one or something, and try and like play sports or play catch or something, it's really hard because you lose your sense of depth perception. That's a planaria. We'll see planaria. They're a little tiny uh, flatworm. This is a seed that's germinating, breaking out of its seed cone. If we look at the electron microscope, 
Um, we see things much closer up. We also, they are often um, sort of gray, unless they've been artificially colored. To use an electron microscope, you often have to coat whatever you're looking at with a thin layer of metal so electrons bounce off of it. And it gives us generally just a black and white view. That's a spider. That's some toilet paper. What? Velcro. <laughs> That's cool. That's a human hair. Fly's foot. This is a fly, but on it are some parasitic mites living on the fly. That's a mite living on a beetle. Again, these are artificially colored just so they stand out. That's a maggot. Oh my god. Oh. <laughs> okay, some insects. Bees. That's disgusting. That's kind of cool. That's not. Oh. That's cute. <laughs> Spider. sort of powder of um, spray on that. Yeah, like, wouldn't that kill Yes, they're usually all dead. Oh. Okay. Yeah, Maya. Okay. okay. How do you get light to bounce off something like your hand? How does that work? It just does. So when light hits the surface, three things can happen to it. It can either um, go straight through, be transferred through, okay? it can be reflected off of it, or it can be refracted and bend. Um, and so certain objects bounce certain types of light. Like for example, okay, your blue shirt, when light hits it, this is gonna be a future unit. When light hits your blue shirt, your shirt absorbs all the colors except for what? Blue. Yellow. Blue. That blue bounce, your shirt is reflecting blue light, which goes to our eyes, allowing us to see your shirt as blue. It absorbs all the other colors. A red shirt, absorbs all colors except for red. 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 A black shirt absorbs all colors. So no light bounces off at reaching our eyes and therefore it looks black. A white shirt reflects all colors which form white light. But that's a future unit. All right, let's talk about the parts of these microscopes, uh, the compound microscopes specifically. You're going to have to memorize these parts and they will be on a quiz. That will be next week. All of them? Yeah. A pretty simple one. All right. So first, the eyepiece. This is the eyepiece. It's the part you look through. It has a lens in there. It's one of the lenses that magnifies the image. The other one are these objective lenses that are down here. Okay, we can rotate these lenses to switch between the various powers. So the eyepiece is one lens. All of our eyepieces magnify 10 times. It says right on here 10x. So that's a 10x magnifier on the eyepiece. For our objectives, there's three powers on our microscopes. Low power is 4x. Medium power, which is yellow, is 10x. And then the blue one is high power, and okay, that's 40x. Those are our magnifiers. The 10X yes. Score yeah. 10X. Um, and also, when you're using these next week, when you switch from one power to another, the key thing is that you want to make sure it gets clicked in. Because if I switch from low to medium power, but I only move it halfway, if it's not clicked in, no light's going to get through. So you got to make sure that it's clicked in in order to see an object. The part you actually hold on to and rotate, that's called the nose piece. Do we have to memorize these in yes. a particular order? Oh, in an order? Not in an order, but if I have a quiz, it's going to say, what is this part called? What is this part called? Oh. What is that? Wait, all of them are just like all of them. simple ones. All of them. Oh. Um, all right. Then a tag between the eyepiece and the objective is this tube. Sometimes it's straight up and down in some microscopes. This one, it's straight up and down. Others, like ours, it's at an angle. Um, that's called the body tube. It keeps the eyepiece and the objective the proper distance apart so that you can focus. Okay. 
you, you find the total magnification of multiplying eyepiece power times objective power. Donna? Can you like focus those with number 11? Yeah, we'll get there, yeah. Um, all right, then the light source. Now, if you look here, what is on this microscope, the diagram? A mirror. Yeah, that's a mirror. Older microscopes used to have a mirror there, and you would shine a light at it, it would reflect it up towards the, the microscope. Ours today are um, more modern. They have an LED light on the bottom. They're also cordless, so I, we charge them over there, but then you could take them to your desk and use them, so you don't have to stay plugged into the wall. But that light source is underneath the microscope. The part where you place your object, this flat part, is called the stage. And to hold the, now when we use a compound microscope, we're always looking at something that's on a slide, a rectangular piece of glass. Um, now some microscopes have clips to hold that down, like this one. But these microscopes have a little clamp that you open up Put your slide in and then close. It's just a different way of holding the slide in place. But these that are shown here are stage clips. Donna? How do you look at liquids in a microscope? You have to make a slide of it. So you put like a sample of it and cover it with a cover slip. Okay. Or you might have a depression slide that's got a little thing you put the liquid in there. Um, below the stage, there's a dial here. And it has, as you turn, it's got different sized holes in it. What do you think that changes? Change? Oh, the of light. Yeah, the amount of light. When you have a small hole chosen, that gives you less light coming through, makes the image a little darker. That would be a setting of one. If you change it to setting of five or six, it's got a bigger hole, allowing more light. It's called the diaphragm. part you would hold on to when you're carrying the microscope, this part that supports it all, it's called the arm. Bottom is the base. Then, when you look at an object on the microscope, when you first look, it's probably going to be out of focus. It's going to be blurry. To adjust the focus, you use two knobs. On this microscope, they're separate. There's a large knob and a small knob. Okay? The large knob focuses it quickly. The small knob focuses it just a tiny amount, kind of to fine tune what you're seeing. So the coarse adjustment is the big knob, the fine adjustment is the small knob. Now, if you look on this microscope, it's set up differently. Do you see a coarse adjustment? Mm -hmm. Or? Yeah. Do you see fine adjustment? Yeah. Where? Um, on, it. on what? Like, there's a big one or a small yes. one. Yes. So this one, the coarse and fine adjustment are built in. So when you turn this big one, see how much the stage moves up and down? Quite a bit, right? But if you grab the narrower part, that also moves the stage. But how much? Oh, wow. A much smaller amount. Okay? So this big, when you turn the big one, that's the coarse adjustment. You turn the small one, that's the fine adjustment. Okay? You use the fine adjustment when you're on high power. Because when you switch to high power, how close is the objective to the stage? Yeah, it's pretty close. If you use a fine adjustment, you could smash the slide into the objective, and that's generally bad. Okay, so instead, we use this fine adjustment. It just moves at small amounts. Any questions about the parts of the microscope? All right, let's just talk about some facts here about the microscope. It's a compound microscope because it has two lenses that magnify the image. The eyepiece and the objective. So Shane was just asking this and Sebastio. 
So when we want, if we want to know how much our image is being magnified, how do we figure it out? Yes, you multiply the power of the eyepiece times the power of the objective lens that you have selected. Where am I? All right. So eyepiece power times objective power. So if I'm using a microscope and I'm using a 10x eyepiece and a 30x objective lens, what's my total magnification? 300. That means what I see is actually 300 times bigger than it is in real life. When you have to go get a microscope and carry it, please always carry it one hand underneath and one hand on the arm so we don't drop them because they are quite expensive. So I'll always carry two hands. One on the arm, one on the face. I'm going to show you some pictures. See if you can tell me what you think they are. They're under the microscope. A seat belt. Seat belt? No. Fiber. A CD disc. DVD. That's pretty close. It says CD. CD. DVD. Okay. Same principle. Yeah, those are the various layers on the disc. What? This is enlarged in the microscope, so it's not wood. I may not be using this for the month of November. Here. Donna? Wait. It's a razor. A razor. I would no shave November. That's what it was. I don't want it. Those are hairs. These are the blades of the razor. I don't shave I get it. S'more cereal? No. <laughs> but it is edible. Why does this say? Oh, no. What? Have chocolate and chocolate? No. Dirt crumbs? You're on the right track. Oh, Ooh. mud? No. <laughs> what? Crumbs? No. Rocks? Salt and pepper. What? Oh, How's it going? No way. Pepper. Salt is supposed to look like diamonds. Those are marshmallows. Are you kidding me? <laughs> Whoa. That's Velcro. Velcro. Are those gummy worms? That's Velcro. <laughs> hook and loop. Velcro is called hook and loop fastener because the rough side of Velcro is made of these little plastic flexible hooks. The soft side of the Velcro is made of little loops, and so when you push it together, the hooks grab onto the loops. When you pull it apart, they flex, and then the loops come off of the hooks. Is that really what it looks yeah, like? Yeah, that's really what it looks like. Oh, now, how is it? Is that artificially colored? It looks like jello. Yeah, probably. Oh, there. That's. Oh, raisin. No, not raisin bread. <laughs> what? Pasta. Toilet paper. Whoa. Oh, yeah. I will eat toilet paper. That's like pasta. Licorice. Licorice. Yarn? No. Sweet. These are um, nylon stockings, yeah. like tights that a um, okay. girl would wear. They're made of nylon fibers strung together to make that material. Ugh. All right. We're plugging along here. We can do this. All right, so when we want to view something on the microscope, here are the steps. Now, whenever we do a microscope activity, I always get called to each scoop a thousand times. People say, oh, I can't see anything. I don't, there's nothing happening here. And it just takes a second to focus. If you follow the steps, so it's really pretty easy. You always start your microscope on low power. Always on low power. You put your slide on the stage. Make sure that it's centered over the light source. Okay. Then you focus it 
using the course adjustment knob. So for example, here's the slide. Put it on the stage. So I'm on low power, put it on the stage. Now in ours, on our microscopes, you actually move the slide, not by moving with your fingers, but by turning these knobs. They move it forward, backward, and right. And right. Okay, so I make sure it's centered. Okay, start at low power. And then I focus it using the course adjustment. It'll come into view, and I can see it clearly. Then I want to switch to higher power. Okay, first I make sure what I'm looking at is focused and centered in my field of view. And then I can switch to medium power. Once I switch to medium power, if it was focused under low, it should be close in medium power. You may have to make some slight adjustments to the focus. Okay? Again, center, refocus. Then if I want to switch in high, again, I turn the objectives to high power. But then I only use the fine adjustment so that I don't smash the, the objective lens into the slide. So if I'm looking at something, again, low power, move it to the center, focus it, switch to medium power, focus, and I can switch to high power. Now it's helpful if you're using microscopes a lot 